time to talk about clipping in Affinity. It can be a discussion whether clipping is considered masking, but as I see it, it falls under masking. Using the clipping feature in Affinity, we can restrict the output area of a layer, which is very similar of what a mask does. Let me show you how clipping works, starting with a simple example. I'll use a rectangle with a solid fill, then using the layers panel, I'll drag the image layer into the rectangle layer title. Now the image layer has become a child of the rectangle. Notice what happens next. The image is clipped to the rectangle, meaning only the area covered by the rectangle remains visible. The child layer, which is the image we just dropped in, repaints only the area defined by the parent. This is how clipping works in Affinity. Clip child layers are limited to the visible area of the parent layer. Anything outside that area will be hidden. You can think of this as similar to the Protect Alpha when painting on a pixel layer. Just like the brush can only paint where the pixels already exist, clip layers can only appear where the parent layer is visible. Clipping also works with pixel layers. Instead of using a rectangle, I can create a pixel layer and paint on it using the brush tool. When I now move the image layer into the pixel layer as a child, notice how the pixel layer behaves very much like a mask. The transparent areas block the image, while the painted areas allow it to show through. If we compare this to a traditional mask, transparency works like black. It hides the child layer, while opaque pixels reveal it. When I erase parts of the painted area, those erased sections immediately hide the corresponding parts of the clipped image. This is why clipping to a pixel layer often feels like using a mask, even though technically it's still clipping. So, the transparency of the parent layer determines what gets clipped. However, this behavior does not apply to imported image layers. In this example, I have an imported PNG with transparency. When I move my test image inside this image layer, the transparent areas are ignored and the entire image bounds are used instead. Personally, this feels like a bug but it appears that Affinity treats the full image layer area as containing data, regardless of visible transparency. In order to get it work, we need to rasterize it, which converts the image layer to a pixel layer, and now it works as expected. Even though masking and clipping can look and feel very similar, there is an important difference between them. This becomes clear with the next simple example using a circle and a box. When I use the circle as a mask for the box, only the area where both shapes overlap remain visible. Everything outside that overlap is hidden. So what we end up seeing is just a red slice of the box. When I clip the box to the circle, the overlapping area behaves the same. The box appears inside the circle. However, the key difference is that the rest of the circle remains visible. The box only replaces the overlapping part of the circle. It does not remove the circle's other visible areas. With a mask, the mask layer is the source, only the intersection area survives. With clipping, the parent layer is the source, its full visible area remains and the child only repaints the area it overlaps. This difference only matters when the two objects do not fully overlap. If the mask or clipping layer completely covers the parent, the result will look the same in both cases. So depending on the situation, using a mask may be a better choice. Clipping, however, can be especially effective when working with adjustment layers, since adjustments normally affect the entire canvas. For example, Instead of masking an adjustment layer to target a specific object, it often makes sense to clip the adjustment to that layer. This keeps the edit focused, cleaner and easier to manage. At the end, you need to decide what makes more sense. For example, a photo in a text effect can be done either by using masking or clipping. The deciding factor here for me is how this affects my workflow. If the text is more important, meaning that if I need to change the text, 
then clipping makes more sense as I can click the layer and modify the text properties or double click to edit the text. In the case of a mask, I can't directly select the text from the canvas. I need to go to the layers panel first and select the text before making any changes. That said, using a mask in this case gives a bit more flexibility. I can apply additional effects to the text before it gets masked, which isn't possible in the same way with clipping. For example, I can blur the text but still keep a sharp image, which would not be possible by using clipping. Both tools are extremely useful. They don't replace each other. Instead, they offer different levels of control and workflow flexibility depending on what you're trying to achieve. In the next video, we'll take a look at using the Erase Blend Mode for masking, so make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks again for tuning in and hit the like button before you leave and see you in the next video.